Okay, it should be live now. many windows to keep track of oh nice oh yeah i hate that who is it's great Yeah, it looks clean. It looks really nice. Yeah, I'm trying out doing more of the uh, window with um, the maps and so forth and not worrying about the combat tracker because we've got the overlay. So I don't really feel like you need the combat tracker. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's and, and it's nice because I have my own. I can still track everything off the screen, but it, it's not taking up real estate with the stream. Well, we'll see. We'll see. I didn't, um, other than tweet about it and throw it on a few channels, I didn't tell too many folks about it. So we'll see what we get. I did. Nice. Uh-oh, Jimmy Needles. <laughs> he's in I know I always say I always yeah right <laughs> uh, how many how many nights are you playing or, or streaming uh, Medicare oh okay and rob you've got um is did you guys finish unknown whom or you have one more week and then fury's gonna do number two? Oh yeah and she was late or something right <laughs> reprieve Oh crap, hold on. She I'm glad she mentioned that. Um I don't have you guys. Hold on. I need to add audio. For talks. That's right. <laughs> so Rob, when are you going to implement that into Siri? Hey Siri, turn on player audio. Um, as soon as you write an extension for me, I don't know. <laughs> All right. How about now, uh, Acer Sin? Thanks for letting me know. I, I have a whole new, uh, scene set up. So can you hear him now? now Gwydion, remind me how you get it to do awesome. when, when we talk, it lights up our picture. How does that happen? So, um, it's a whole, I mean, you, you know, the discord normal, push to talk right i mean you've used that for years oh, are you capturing like one pixel and blowing it up doing that no thing? no there's a whole and i can send you the code but this guy did a whole code where you know i just paste the code in and then it's it's toggled off of your id in discord but i can put whatever background image i want and so for you guys i'm using the same image which has your you know just a parchment and then it has your portrait and then when you push to talk it toggles it to 100 percent um uh lighting or whatever you want um i don't know what i'm trying to say oh, brightness 100 percent want that yeah. it's it's really it's actually once you get it set up it's really freaking easy um yeah, cool but it looks and pretty could cool you, could you you you're not doing it but you you could also make like your frame yourself dm gwydion light up or something if you want. I, I thought about that i just ran out of time but yeah i think so. yeah yeah okay cool yeah I, oh i want that big time 
Okay. Yeah, it's pretty uh pretty easy. Oh, follow Plague Stone. Oh my god. Let me shut that off and then we'll get started. Um that's probably in stream elements. That's funny. Oh yeah, Aaron Sin. What's up, Aaron Sin? Am I saying that right? Acer Sin. Acer Sin. That's right. I was trying to remember from last time. We are not playing Fall Plague Stone, but let me uh turn off the timer. There we go. Done. All right. Well, I'm sure um, hopefully people will join um, as we go. And as a reminder, oh, so we will go through that. You've got uh, Lazy Stooner, Acerson, Rob Tui, Matacure, who you have not met, and uh, Urash. So, you know, I think you know all the folks except for um, Matacure, I think. So I need an extra 30 seconds here. I'll be right back. Sorry. Oh, okay. Go ahead. We'll wait just a, another minute. Fucking Stooner. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be the same. <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't be a game. Nice. Is he going to feed the fish? Is that what's going on? No, nah, he's going to hang out in the tavern so we can get the game started. <laughs> nice. I like you it. You all meet in a tavern. Right? Oh. Everybody has dark vision except me. Oh, snap. Torches. There's always got to be one, right? Yeah, there always has to exactly. be one asshole that doesn't have dark vision. The cleric <laughs> probably has a light cantrip he can drop on your... I was, uh, you know, I was listening to well, either a podcast or reading an article or something about how to, if you're a DM and all your players have dark vision, how to screw your party. Oh, jeez. And it was something about um, make everything in the adventure color dependent so that people with dark vision can't tell colors, right? So you, you come to the wall and, and there's three buttons and you got to push the yellow one and they don't know which one's the yellow one. Oh my thought, God. Oh, that's brilliant. See, I was actually seriously looking into the math of how like Fantasy Grounds or Unity converts a color image into grayscale to see if I could come up with a way that in color it would show a contrast, but in the grayscale of dark vision, it would look the same hue to put puzzles in the floor and stuff like that oh my uh, god i haven't figured I it out it. yet but I, i've been looking into it to see oh if yeah I that's a really interesting idea yeah because there, because when cool. i heard that i was like yeah i never would have thought of that like make the players like oh i got dark vision yeah guess what you're screwed <laughs> you know, nice all right well i think we have everybody here so we'll get uh we'll get going so uh welcome everyone whether you're watching live or, or watching on youtube and if you're watching on youtube Assuming we get to 10 players in chat, sorry, you missed the giveaway of the uh, adventure. So if we do get 10 players in chat or 10 uh, participants in chat um, sometime during the night, then I will give away a copy of this adventure. Um, so before I start real quick, and I don't, I don't want to bring the stream down, but I did want to, this is the first time I've streamed since the passing of, of Digital Dungeon Master Dave Middleton. And I just wanted to to tell everybody, look, he was such an inspiration to me in terms of getting the confidence to stream and, and joining. I think he, he and, and Rob were the first ones I ever really got to, uh, to know uh, in the gaming community and FS, FSH SMO. So I know Dave's watching somewhere, so I'm going to keep this happy and positive. Uh, but he's a great guy, and, and we're all going to miss him a time. So I hope, he, I hope he's watching this and he's playing Splug somewhere, uh, somewhere on the good side. Um, but anyway... I just wanted Plug. to, yeah, it's Splug is one of his favorite characters. Um, all right, so before we jump into the adventure, I'm going to let each player introduce themselves, and we'll go from the from the order of left to right on the stream. So um, we'll start with uh, Donald Scrugel, who's played by Lazy Stooner, and as always, you know, say anything you want about where where you are and where they can find you and all that good stuff. Uh, I'm Lazy Stooner, playing Donald Scrugel. He's a level 7 fighter, and he wears a blue hat and yellow pants, and is kind of a psychopath. If you hear him say, oh, I oughta, then um, he's going to do something stupid. Yeah. And I, I got no, I don't do anything anymore, so I don't have any uh, plugs. Nice. All right, so Every Goody, if that's how you pronounce it, Mr. Rob. Is that how you pronounce it? I have no clue. You can pronounce it ever you want, and I'll try to follow suit. <laughs> so, uh, every, every Glutey is a halfling uh, rogue, and uh, I, Rob Tui, playing him, uh, my purple icon, very recognizable to everyone it should be, and I put my 
I put my socials in the chat, linktree slash Rob Tui, so you can go click on that. Nice. And uh, I'm excited to play a rogue. I have played rogues before, but I haven't played one for a while. So that whole sneak attack, uncanny dodge, evasion, that's all very going to happen. Santa Claus. Awesome. I just did the wrong tweet, I think, but that's okay. We'll keep going. So Reginald Fezziwig, Mr. Matt yeah. Curie. Uh, so hey everybody, and uh, I'm playing Reginald Fezziwig, who is a high elf cleric of life, who is a jolly old soul who just likes to keep people uh, happy, and uh, so he'll he'll spend most of his time trying to keep everybody's spirits up. Uh, as for my socials and whatnot, I don't really do a whole lot other than make and sell extensions and and stuff. Uh, pretty much everything is under the Rob Tui stuff. So if you check out his channel, that's where you'll find me. Bam. Yes. And as we go through tonight, uh, if you guys think about it, uh, feel free to shout out when we're using some of those extensions because I'll forget. But that's awesome. He does great work, guys. I mean, I have, I think I own pretty much everything. So it's all, it's all incredible for the automation. All right. How about uh, Uvula? I mean, Udalin? Udalin? <laughs> Uh, I changed gender, just so you know. Uh, anyway, Udalan Kohli is a wizard 7th level of the Evocation School and uh, being played by Urash54, and I would have chose Urash, uh, but Twitch was out of that, so I had to choose Urash54. But uh, tonight, I'm going to make sure the dwarf uh, is competent. That's my only goal. Nice. I like it. All right. So... Um, the beginning of this adventure, just so you all know, is there's going to be a, a fair bit of uh, theater of the mind. So, um, but don't worry, there are maps. But um, to begin with, so you all are uh, bringing uh, medicine, some medicinal herbs, to a town physician in the town of Grace. And you've been traveling for some time. It was a, it was an urgent request, um, and you arrive in the town of Grace. Um, around 10 10 30 in the evening so it's it's pretty late um you see you know a few lights on and you get to the small house um that uh that holds the physician and as you you arrive you you knock on the door of the small house and you know the snow starts to tumble down from the frame as as it, it rattles around in this kind of cold empty night with wind wind howling a, a bit in the uh, in the background and you know, you, you hope you have the right place. You know, your instructions were to deliver the package the first thing, no matter what time it was. But the directions were spotty at best. But um, the herbs that you're bringing are for a particularly sick child. And so here you are. And after, after you wait a moment, the door's opened by a man who's clearly worn down. And, you know, it seems like he's, he's been, you know, worse for wear for, for the age. Um, but he smiles at you nonetheless. And he says, oh, hello, you must be delivering the physician's order. I'm Mr. Cratchit, but simply call me Bob. Please come right in. And as you guys, as you come across the, the doorway, um, it's a cramped home. It's, it's small, it's modest, but although it's, it's worn down over the years, you, you can tell that there's you know, a lot of love in the home and you see multiple children that stare at you as you as you all shuffle inside, except for a, a small boy who's who's sitting between his mother and an, an elderly man with a white beard, and he's kind of slowly slurping on some soup. And as the elderly man sees you all kind of shuffle in, uh, he rises and looks at you and, and greets you and says, "Did you travel travel through the night to get here? Very kind. I'm indebted to you." And he, he takes the bundle of you from you and, and handles over a, a small bag of coins. And then he, he kind of looks over at the, the child and kind of gets closer to all of you and, and gathers you around. And kind of under his breath, he says, sadly, I fear these will not be much of use now. Poor Timothy has only gotten worse and might be beyond what help dry plants from the last harvest can do. And Mr. Cratchit, or Mrs. Cratchit, excuse me, raises a hand to push back some of her hair. And she says, oh, dears, you must be exhausted. Would you like some soup? And I'm going to pause for a minute as you guys decide your interactions. For some reason, I don't know if you guys ever see this, but Sirenscape just seems to, seems to have 
frozen. Does that happen, Medicare, to you guys at all? Trying to hit, hit the play, but I think I need to turn off and on the online player again. I've had I've had it just um, shut down maybe Weird, one yeah. out of every 10 games, but just start it back up again. Yeah, I'm yeah, just going to close down. Freeze. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen it freeze, but I have seen it turn off. It's just strange. I mean, do you use the online player, Rob? Because, yeah, I was just clicking I one do. of the yeah, elements. I, I, don't, I use exclusively the online, yeah. See if this works now. Are you pushing anything on audio movers? Because I'm not... Or maybe that's why it's not. nothing's coming through. It should come. It looks like it's going to start playing now. Well... I see the sound bars moving, but I don't hear anything. I'm look. I'm trying sound again. Bars moving at all. Yeah, the second uh, two of four are moving, but the top two were moving earlier when the sound was coming through. Okay, one second before we keep going. Let me try to make sure I can try to fix that. <laughs> I don't hear no music, but I heard some goddamn dogs. I'll tell you that right now. Right? <laughs> I told you. why oh i know one second it's always something with audio i think i know what's going on okay how about now yes yep yep yeah damn audio man yeah i don't know why it just froze but um we'll leave it going so okay so you guys are you're in the home um and you've given back so what uh tell me what interactions or what you guys want to do or say? Reginald would uh, go up to the boy and, and the woman and and inquire as to what uh, what is his ailment? What uh, what is troubling him? And he says, you know, I, I hear so many different things. I, the physician, you know, he just he tells me I'm I'm very sick, but I I don't know. I'm I'm. I eat my soup. I'm trying to get better and, and get stronger, but it just doesn't doesn't seem to really be helping me. Perhaps mm -hmm. I could provide a little bit of comfort. Uh, may I say a prayer over you? And his eyes kind of get, get wide and, and light up a bit, and, and he smiles, and he says, Oh, yes, mister, please. That, that would be great. Uh, so I want to cast Lesser Restoration on him. Nice. Love it. Sweet. And so what does that what does that do for him? Uh, so lesser restoration allows you to cure one disease or condition, uh, blinded, deafened, paralyzed, poison. Okay, nice. Oh man, Rob! Thanks for the cheer. I don't have my sounds going right now for the. Cheer bits. Uh, but thank cheer you, bits cheer bits in the stream. That's right. <laughs> cheer bits. So he definitely he seems to you know he seems to, so his spirits lighten a bit. I mean you you can still tell that, um he seems very ill and and very sick, but it, certainly he seems to feel better and and um you know he smiles and and says thank thank you, Mister, thank you so much. Anyone else have anything they'd like to uh, to do while they're in, while you're uh, kind of gathering around? Donald Scrugel will definitely take her up on some of that soup. Yes, Every Never was about pass. to ask for some soup as well. Never pass uh, up a free meal. And she seems happy to have a, a little bit of, of purpose and distraction. So she's, oh, oh, yes, absolutely. And so she goes and brings brings back a, a few bowls and she looks at uh, Udalin and, and Reg, Reginald and say, would, would you like some too? Most certainly. This is excellent, excellent. So she goes back to the kitchen, and you know it's it's not a very big 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 house, so you can, you kind of see where she's going. But she brings back the soup and, and brings you, you know, some nice good portions, and um, says, "Come, come, sit around the table with us." Yes, I would like a bowl too, and uh, I'll I'll be happy to clean up uh, when we're done. Oh, thank you. That's that's way too kind. I, I I'm fine, but. But thank no. you. Uh, thank no, you no. so much. It's simple. A wave of my hand and we'll all be clean. Oh, oh, magic. Oh, excellent. Yes, yes, yes. 
So, so everyone seems, you know, their spirits seem to be a little, little better. And, and you see the uh, physician, um, you know, seems to be uh, putting the herbs together and kind of mixing them with some hot water and, and seems to be uh, kind of making a little bit of a, a, a drink for, um, for Timothy. So he, he kind of does that and, and brings that together and, and brings it back to him. And you guys, you know, chat for a while and, and, um, you know, finish your, finish your soup. And as you do, um, you, you start to hear out in the, uh, in the distance outside, you hear the chiming of a town bell and, you know, it starts to, to chime and it, it's, it's chiming through the 11, uh, 11 o'clock hour. Um, and, but with it, you kind of hear that in addition to the, uh, to the town bell, um, you hear what seems to be the sound of chains dragging and clattering out in the snow. And why is this oh, it's so frustrating? S Sirenscape just keeps freezing on me. That's really disappointing. Wonder what's going on. It's probably your personality. So dragging chains. Nice. You said? <laughs> yes, I'm going to shut this down one more time, but yeah, that's disappointing. Are you using the online player or? Yeah. Yep. Oh, weird. I'm going to shut it down one more time. And, but if, if it doesn't work from there, I guess we'll just it's disappointing, but we'll play without it. Yeah. It's weird. I don't know if it's just, uh, my system's got too much going on, but I suppose that's possible. Darn it. So, um, Normally what I do is shut down Pornhub and then you should be fine. Oh, okay. Thank you. Gone. Okay. Tell me if any of that's too loud too. All right. And so Udalan, uh, what did you do? Oh, you did, are you cleaning up the table? Yeah, we, we just cleaned up there as we walked out. Okay. I'll use thaumaturgy to entertain the kids. Okay, so you're hearing this this wind blow, and, and kind of everyone's kind of looking around, um, and and looking outside a bit. So, is it something you guys want to pay attention to? Do you want to keep kind of talking to the folks inside? Tell me what you want to do. Uh, Donald Scrugel will definitely step out the door, wondering what the hell is going on. I will okay. follow. Okay. And as you guys start to uh, to head outside, um, you see a, a pale man, almost translucent, and he's kind of huddled over, like bent, uh, weary. He wears a really heavy coat that's wrapped tightly around him by a great chain that fans out into the snow and into the darkness. So he's literally dragging these huge chains behind him. And he... He slowly raises his gaze. I mean, he's staring at the ground. He looks up at you, um, and as he, he locks eyes with all of you, and he says, mm, you have done a good thing tonight, this night, but more is needed, so much more, before the night is done. The church bells continue to toll as he continues. My name was Jacob Marley. I knew Lord Ebenezer in life, and I committed with him every misbegotten act of greed and malice. As recompense, I now wear the chain I forged in life. He groans and says, I made it link by link. He said, it is too late for me, but perhaps not for him. He has prepared for many years to slip the noose of old age and become immortal. But to do so will cost both his soul and the town of grace far more than the simple chains that bind me. Yet there is still a chance for grace. For tonight, Scrooge will be visited upon by three spirits. For his sake, he must hear what they have to say, but there are dark creatures who want to claim Scrooge's soul. If left to their own devices, they will undo the spirit's work. All of you must find your way into Scrooge's bedchamber before the final stroke of midnight. There you will encounter the spirits and must push back whatever foul beings show themselves. This is the only hope left for Scrooge and for Grace. 
As he speaks his final words, his body begins to fade. As the church bells toll with the eleventh stroke. As the final bell, bell reverberates through the street, the ghost dissolves like smoke blown away by the echo. You gaze up from the snowy street and can see the Lord's Manor sitting atop the hill at the center of grace as the final bell fades into the night. So, give me one second. I'm going to change and show you a bit of what the town of grace looks like. Okay. So imagine, and it's it's a little hard to uh, to tell by the the image, but obviously Scrooge's um, palace, if you will, sits up at the top of the hill right here. And think about that street um, that winds its way up. It's a long winding street, and you all are starting really down in this location. You're kind of down here at the Cratchit's house. And you need to uh, make your way to the, up to Scrooge's residence and get there and get inside by midnight. So you have, you have your work cut out from you. It's really snowy and, and icy, um, and it's actually quite a ways away, so... Assume, uh, tell me if you want to, to go right away, anything you want to do, or, or do you want to try to make your way to the, uh, to the residence right away? What time is it roughly for us? Right it's, now? it just told 11. So, you know, you think it's going to take you quite a while. There's a lot of ice and that street. I don't know if you, what I'm trying to describe is like in San Francisco, it's a really steep winding street as you get up towards the center of town. So it's it's going to be a challenge to get there and and get there on time. We should go right away. I agree. Agreed. Evil is out. We should vanquish it. Evil is afoot. Okay. So you you as you kind of walk and push your way towards Scrooge's Manor, street by street, falling snow fills in your tracks behind you as you skirt around the large angel fountain in the center of Market Square. And um, let's do this. I am going to ask you if I can do this for a perception check. Did I do that right? Oh, yes. I love that extension. It's great. Awesome. Um, did I miss somebody? Because I got everybody's except for... Except for me. Sorry, I just don't want to look something up. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. So um, that's okay. While you're doing that, I would say, um, so every, um, you notice that the snow is at least a, about a foot thick here. And you almost don't notice, but the angel statue appears broken. In fact, you kind of notice as you pass the buildings, they all look like they're in need of repair underneath this blanket of white snow. And after more trudging through the snow, you eventually reach the road to the hill. So the hill that's leading up to the manor. And it's kind of back and forth in this huge, long switchback. And as you draw near, you realize it's not snow, but it's actually glistening ice. The street looks less like a road and more like a frozen river with, you know, running from the top of the hill to the very bottom. So it's going to be very challenging to get up these streets. But... Um, but, you know, you, you guys are up for the challenge, and as you start hitting, heading up the street, I am going to request another roll from each of you, which is... Do I need to unclick one? Nope, there we go. Beautiful. So I just need an athletics check. Since I do have Firebolt, I'll, uh, when necessarily, I'll use Firebolt to blast pockets of the ice and snow. That's awesome. As you do that, let's say this for um, Reginald and Every, I'll give you advantage on that roll because you did not pass your save. So give me one second. So I need the two of you to go ahead and make another roll and see if you pass um, with advantage this time. 
So wow. both of you, <laughs> even with the uh, even with the help of the firebolt, which is awesome, um, as you're as you're kind of uh, heading up, and you you pull yourself up this um, massive ice. I mean, you get around it, but it it takes you guys some time. So, you know, it's cost you. You probably are about you know thirty minutes now um, from uh, the stroke of midnight. So you kind of you get yourself through the. Uh, through that mass of ice and you kind of you look up at the first stretch of street and it looks pretty smooth but as you head as you head towards one of the first switchbacks um you hear a crunching sound from the roof of a closed shop as you pass by and you look up to see snow and shingles falling towards you so you all can do a dex check one second Ooh, i get to uh, add half my proficiency to this now will that give way, that to him? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Rob. Uh, do Do we all start with an inspiration, or we don't? Yes, you can. I didn't say that, okay. but yeah, you can. It didn't appear for me. Uh, what didn't? Oh, you just you want me to throw it manually? Oh shoot! It should have given me oh, one second. Um. You had just oh. Original, then every selected again. I saw that. Uh, about now. Is that right? All right. So, um, ooh, Donald and Udalin, you, you both are trying to get out of the way of the avalanche, but you do not. And one second. I got you both targeted. Yes, I do. And you are both hit by massive. Oh my God. Uh, pretty big by these um, ice and, and shingles falling as they kind of hit you and, and uh, kind of give, give you some nice bruises as you're uh, heading up the, the street. So as you, um, as you continue up the street, you have an unsettling feeling as it's coming from this alleyway that's uh, just off to your left. And it looks like there's a, a you think there's a shortcut if you head that way. Um, and and you, you feel like that might be an, a nice shortcut, but at the same time you can keep, might take you a little bit longer, but you can keep going straight up the, up the hill. So what do you guys want to do? I probably were concerned that we get there as fast as we can. What do you guys think? Uh, yeah, yeah, let's go go the alleyway. Let's do it. Okay. What's going to happen? Some more uh, ice is going to land on my head? <laughs> <laughs> right? So... You wear a helmet. That's right. So as you uh, head into the alleyway... Uh, you're hoping for a shortcut, but not even halfway up the steps, you see three silhouettes appear ahead of you, outlined in the dim light. The largest and most cantankerous one waves a knife, growling, Toll, your coin or your life. And as he does that, um, I'm going to have you guys make a perception. So, Every and Udalin, as you're looking, and uh, let's see, and Donald too, everyone except Reginald. Reginald is in his own little world with his. Firebolt, but um, everyone else, you notice the lights pour here, but you can make out two barrels lying on their sides in front of two other men, and they're kind of up above you. Looks like they might uh, try to use that and uh, either try to try to make it harder for you guys to get up, or, or maybe maybe even use those to uh, run you over. So, what would you all like to do? As the one guy is asking you from the top, oh, or your coin or your life. They're not attacking yet. They're just kind of, they're all kind of waiting right now. Udalan kind of just laughs. laughs. Okay. He didn't get my coin. Whoa, I, I got 774 it. gold. I'm not giving yeah. that up. <laughs> right. That's exactly what I saw. I was like, nope. <laughs> no, I'm just going to bomb rush them as fast as I and harder as I can. I'll pull, I'll knock an arrow and get ready. Okay. So you guys, um, all right. 
so as as you do that, um, you know, as the as the thieves are kind of looking at you, they're they're they they can tell that you're ready to fight, and they fir they first release these barrels at you. One second. And some of you save. Actually, you might, you might have all saved. And these barrels kind of roll. Oh my God! Reroll. That's horrible. Um, so uh, let's see. So you, so you guys do that. <laughs> Two ones. I know, right? Um, and and as you do that, um, the 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 thugs kind of looking at you and realizing that that didn't do hardly anything. They immediately cut tail and and run. They, they're not even staying around for you. They just cut tail and run. Um, so they're kind of running up the hill going, ah, shit, I thought that would be easy. You hear as they're running off into the night. Bye-bye. Yep. Um, so you guys, you're making your way through the, the balance of the town, and, and you, you make your way up to the end of the street, and you can tell the, the hour is definitely getting late. And you arrive at um, kind of what seems to be the, uh, the front of a uh, manor. And just outside, there's a big fence. And um, by one second, get to it. Um, <clears throat> so you're at the, the front of this massive gate and um, there's about a 10 foot stone wall half frozen over in the bitter wind and you see a stone path that's leading up to the front of the large closed iron gate and next to it is a single barred and shuttered window cut into stone and you see the candlelight is streaming out from between the, the cracks so somehow you're going to need to find a way through over around the wall whatever you whatever you think but can you guys see the line of sight does it stop yeah it should yeah, Do you guys just see the yes. big wall okay yeah so you can't really see past it but yep yeah Udalan's gonna go look in the window to see uh if anybody's in there so it looks like there's a uh, a guard it's it looks like that leaks into a guard house right behind you um uh, right behind the wall um, that you can't quite see, but in through the window, it looks like there's a, a guard house and you see kind of a, what appears to be a very sleepy guard that's kind of drowsy and dozing inside the guard house, just beyond the wall. So I'll walk over and uh, say, Hey, uh, I can misty step my way into that room. Cause I can see in there. Do you want me to go in there and uh, get the keys? We could try knocking and see if he comes and opens it. Ah, that saved me a spell slot. Good thought. <laughs> so you're you're knocking on the uh, the door there. He does not seem to come out. He I don't know if he's drunk or sleeping, but he does not seem to come out. Is there any kind of peephole, or can we see between the slats and the door through, or is it totally solid? It looks like um, that there's a path beyond it that leads up into the uh, the manor. Sorry, I'm relaunching the online player again. It just keeps crashing. This door looks like weird. it could just be opened by raw strength. Um, you can let's see. You could try. Um, let me see. Yeah, you don't think so. I mean, you think, you know, you either, you, you think it's kind of up and over, possibly, um, you know, like pick the lock with a sleight of hand, but you, you don't think, and you could try to get up and over the uh, the gate, but you don't think that you can just like literally pull it off the hinge or anything. Okay. What do you guys think? I'm pretty stubby, so up and over is not a great option for me. Every, do you have a set of lock picks? Let me check. Let me check in my uh, in my bag. I forgot. I do. I absolutely do. Let's try that. Okay. So 
So it seems that I should be quite the expert at my tools. And do you need, um, will you get for sleight of hand, do you already have your advantages in there? If not, I can throw advantage on this for you. Well, it, it, uh, it, I mean, I have the skill check, but it doesn't, I don't know that it gives me advantage automatically. But I should have advantage, shouldn't I? I I'm fine with that. So I, I just added, I clicked okay. on advantage. I don't know if I did it too late, but oh, see I, if you I can. Did it, but that's all right. Here we go. Yeah. Nice. So you hear a click and the iron gate opens. I turn around and I say, easy as pie. Thanks for reminding me that I have these tools. Nice. I love it. Uh, Taylor provides. What do you knew? <laughs> right. Um, what do you knew? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so you make your way past and, you know, assuming you don't rouse the guard, um, he doesn't seem to interested in anything but snoozing. So, uh, without the building buildings to, to buffer it, the bitter wind cuts through as you, as Scrooge's manor looms large above three stories of imposing stone and iron rest on the hill, towering over everything else for miles. It's a grand building, but you cannot help but notice that it seems to be in disrepair. A few sing shingles are missing and more than one bit window is boarded up. The only light coming from the manor is a soft glow from a third floor window. So as you make your way in, I'm gonna ask for one more check. That comes through. Not on my. I didn't get a check thing. No. Oh, here we go. There it is. There we go. Cool. It helps if you. Whoa! Look at all those. Did you all have advantage? Did I click on advantage or something? That's funny. Um, you needed it. It. It, it said modifier advantage. So yeah. Got it. Okay. Um, well, look. At least at least a few of you would have noticed anyway. It looks like based on what I see, um, you notice a thin line of smoke coming from a chimney near the window. Most likely, someone has left the fire smoldering for warmth while they slept. So as you enter the building, your, stone, your steps echo on the hard stone floor of the entryway as you finally leave behind the cold air and the sluggish guard. Each sound you make is rebuked by the silence that hangs in the air and hovers over the worn carpet and old curtains. It feels as real as the dust that sits on the empty pedestals and unlit lamps and reaches up the pillars that stretch before you. Disappearing into the shadows, it creeps up the twin staircases, curling along the far side of the room and languishes on the balcony. So as you step in, you're confronted by these huge stairs. And as your foot lands on the first step, a bell toll. Are you guys not hearing the bell? So irritated. I didn't hear the bell. Why is the bell not working? I'm looking. And if it doesn't, we're just going to have to play without it. But very disappointed in Sirenscape right now. Um, um, I know. I mean, it's showing um, that it's playing. Oh, I know why. Yeah, this helps. There we go. Um, so now you hear it, right? Yeah. Yep. Excellent. So as your foot lands on the first step, a bell tolls, shattering the silence. The chimes to midnight have begun. You lurch up the stairs two at a time, the chimes racing with you. Eleven. On the balcony, a door sits to your right. And the hallway stretches out to the left. A tired patrolman's jaw drops at the side of you and he stammers for words. But before you is a flight of stairs leading to the third floor. What do you do? Do you keep going? Keep going up? Absolutely. All right. You charge up the flight of stairs, grabbing hold of the railing. You pivot your momentum up the next flight, legs burning. You arrive at the landing, breathing heavily. The floor is dark and clearly has few visitors. Three hallways stretch out before you. The two outer hallways are left dark with dust on the floor. 
The third center hallway has windows, a worn dark red carpet, and at the end you can see large double doors. Full speed, head, shoulder, head and shoulder first into those doors. All right. <laughs> All right. And as you do that, one second. I love it. He's a or right. not. You, um, so as you do that, you slam into the doors and you realize the doors open outward. <laughs> so you, you slam, you slam open the doors and pull them forth and you arrive in the room, in the center of a large room. And this room has a, a balcony. And can you guys see um, the map? And do you see yeah. the, uh, okay, good. Mm -hmm. Can you see through the door? No. Negative. No. It is closed. All right, oh, there we go. Oh, oh. Okay. Look at that. Um, so as you open the door and, and you can, you can move about the um, a bit, and if you want to move your your way into the room a bit, I don't know that I have to. Okay, I do have a token lock on. So as you get a little bit closer into um, the room, you see kind of a uh, on the bottom left of the room, kind of the left corner of the room. Um, there's a, there's a fireplace giving off uh, a bit of a, a glow and some heat still from some embers that, you know, looks like they were, um, the fireplace uh, was turned off probably as he, as he, as someone went to bed and you see kind of drapes that are closed around this huge canopy bed. And then on the bottom left of the room, kind of in this corner, looks like it's a desk and chairs that are covered in old notes and half hidden is a, a dark purple book that's kind of got some gold glistening colors around it almost seems to sparkle um as you as you kind of look over at it i'll point it out to our wizard and read it no Ooh. okay cleric too i guess they're smart people as well do you want to head over that way not, not so yes. yes i will head over that way no i tried to click yes not so much smart, there we go but uh curious okay you uh you go to uh to reach it and your hand goes right through it i oodlin i don't i keep trying to try it again yeah i think i'm stuck in the wall or something there probably yeah. exactly what it is the yeah. pathing with dynamic Just, lighting you actually have to like follow around squares. walls you can't cut through anymore right. yet it's quite nice actually I, but if i can if i click on shift and hold i can do it that's right so, um, so, uh, you try to, you try to put, pick up the book and you cannot pick it up. Well then. Nothing. And you're realizing it's not only the book, as you try to interact with anything, you are incorporeal. You cannot even touch, uh, anything. And as, as, um, every nears the bed. And you can't really, you know, you're, you're trying to touch maybe the canopy there and it doesn't, you can't really, um, see it or, or sorry, it won't move for you. But as you do it, you near the bed, an old man wearing a nightcap and he looks like this. Uh, if I can find him. So he, he, he has this, this big gold medallion, uh, sitting around, hanging around his neck. It's some, some type of office. You can't really tell what, but he stares slack jawed before bolting up and sputtering out a horse. How, how did you get in here? And before you can answer, you actually see that he's not looking at you. He's pointing at and looking at somebody outside and as he looks past you he clearly is looking off at the balcony behind you and uh i'm trying to get this image up for the stream there we go and you you see this beautiful translucent woman who says i am the spirit of christmas past and a voice as clear as the 12th bell is her, her voice is just crystal clear and she looks 
like this. Share with you. And she says, um, <clears throat> and, and Scrooge says, long past? She says, your past. And she glides over to the bed and raises an outstretched hand. We must away. Her eyes settle and, and actually stare at all of you. And she kind of looks at each and every one of you and says, there is much work ahead of us tonight. And as she comes in, she takes Scrooge by the hand and cautiously Scrooge takes her hand and she leads him to the double doors by which you just entered. And they open before her and a blinding light fills the room as she and Scrooge step through. And as you're all following after them, you squint as your eyes adjust to the harsh light. And as you do so, you find yourself in a, a boarding school classroom. And give me a second to set that up and I will show you. It looks like kind of an old grammar school for, for lack of a better term. It looks, um, yeah, it looks like it's an old cr classroom with the desks that used to have the little, you know, you can open the desks up, they kind of swivel in front of you. And let's pull you guys on and then share it with you. One second. By the way, there's only nine people now, but we did have 10. I don't believe it. I don't buy it. Now, if we <laughs> did, then I'm giving away. I'm giving it away at the break. So thanks, everybody. I have not been paying attention to the stream. I apologize. I've been focused on sounds and DMing, but thanks, everybody, for being here. Appreciate it, and we will give it away. Um, Ooh, so, stuff. what's that? No, I'm just looking at the combat tracker. <laughs> oh, yeah, you guys see it. Oh, that's all right. I'll just, um, I'll show it. It's all lies. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, um, sheesh, that was nice. All right. Um, so let me share this with you. So, <clears throat> So as you, um, as your eyes kind of adjust here, uh, or as you get into the room, um, as your, your vision starts to settle, you find yourself standing in this classroom and young, and there's a young Ebenezer Scrooge that sits in class, listening intently to his teacher and near the head of the classroom stand the spirit of, of what appears to be Christmas past and Scrooge who mutters to himself. I, I remember this place. I used to attend here. And he looks at the spirit and he says, spirit, why, why have you brought me back to my old school? Do you intend to show me every moment of my wasted use? Bah, humbug. The spirit says nothing. And the class gets up to leave. And as you watch, young Ebenezer is approached by a tall man with a package. Not his package, but a package. He's, he's holding a package. And his proportions seem off ever so slightly. Like his arms are a little bit too long and his, his face is a little bit too unblemished, too perfect, and he seems uncomfortable in his own skin. He's more of a creature than a man. And the creature then leans down and whispers to young Ebenezer while the present day Scrooge leans forward, really trying difficultly, with, with difficulty to hear. And suddenly shadows spring around to life in the room surrounding young Ebenezer and the creature. One of the shadows dives towards the creature and, and he was there for a moment, you swear you saw him, but then he disappears. The rem remaining ones silently turn their attention, not on Scrooge, not on the ghost of Christmas past, but in all of you, as you can all roll initiative as these creatures Hello. come up out of the floor all around you. Yeah, I like how you have to clarify that because Rob's in here, right? That's the reason why. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Now, I, I, I love how when I, when I converted this module, um, I love how you can keep, you can put it on the effects and it, it keeps the effects like that little wa wavy effect. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. That's love really it. cool. I didn't get the initiative uh, thing. Oh shit. Am I supposed to do that through a oh, requested oh, oh, role? Oh, I'm I sorry. <laughs> My <laughs> fault. My fault. Yeah, Old, school. I can Old school. Old school. All right. Let's see. Now, should there have been sound for the beginning of the initiative? If not, I, don't, I guess I just won't worry about sound anymore. 
I didn't hear any sound. Should it have rolled? Usually there is a sound tied to that, yeah. Okay. Um, I tried, uh, there it is. Oh, that worked at least. That was press digitation. Okay, we're all good. All right. All right, so this kind of creature comes up towards every. What? And as he tries to, to reach out to you, and his, his arm just like, he, he can't even, it, it's really hard to tell what he's, but he's kind of, both arms kind of come out from, okay. from his body. Oh, yes, yes, go ahead. I'm going to use Uncanny Dodge. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Sorry, I've been ignoring you. Um, so does he have to do something to get, or do you automatically, I'm sorry, I don't remember how it works. No, no, it's an effect that I resist. I resist whatever he does. Okay, got it. So I can go ahead and go forward with yep. my attack. Okay, here we go. Or not my attack, but so he does some nasty, dark damage, but he also grapples and restrains you. Well, that seems unfriendly. Yes, and you are not happy with that. Um, so that is his. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking Pathfinder too. I'm like, okay, he has two more actions. He's gonna, he's gonna attack you again. We can't. <laughs> no. So this guy comes towards you, and I don't, I don't know if I like the center on map. I need to turn that off. Five, ten. So he dashes all the way to there, and then, wow, did you all really all roll that poorly? Yes. You did. Three, three, three. It was four. because we did it manually and not by you sh serving it to us. No, I That's think it was. DM dice mods work. I, I was going to say, I think it might have been that. Um, but, yeah, so he can get all the way here, but that's all he can do. Oh, I need to. Okay, that's fine. A lot of stuff in the combat track. All right, every. I'm going to go into options and turn off the center. Where is that um, auto center map? There we go. All okay. right. And so you are grappled and restrained. Yes. I'm going to still attack with my daggers. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, hold on. I have a, I have a dagger and a rapier. So I'll use the rapier first. That sucks. And dagger. Yeah, that all sucked. I don't know if anybody knows. I don't know if you guys know that. Right. So, um, every while restrained. Every um roll a um a d4 for me please. Okay. So your strength is now 6. So as this thing is enveloping you, you're feeling the strength just leached out of you as this thing has you grappled and you you know that if your strength goes to 0, that's that's not a good thing. That's that's basically the same as, as you uh, beginning to die. So not so, such a good thing. So you realize that now that it's gone through your turn, that you need to get this thing off of you if at all possible. Okay. Udalin. All right. Udalin is going to move to there and okay. attack line number 16 to get him off my buddy. Since I can't, uh, I think I will do um, acid splash on him because he looks pretty creepy. He needs to burn. Burn, baby, burn. I like it.
Nice. So it didn't. It did not like that. It was not happy with that. That's good. That's good. I was just testing one to see what he resists. All right, my, I'm done. I, sh I should. I should hide DM rolls. No, I'm just kidding. All right. Oh yeah, I'm double yeah. attacking Lie Eight because I don't like things coming near my healer. I like that. I don't like. Uh... Yep. Right, and you hit him. Nice, and you do. Yeah, that right. that did solid damage to him. My second attack. Wah, wah. Oh, I did not have the the uh, auto crit module. So sorry about that. Yeah, it's all good. And, but no, uh, yep. That will be my turn. Oh, thanks, Yarosh. Appreciate that. Yep. So, guys, now, sorry. Go ahead. Keep going. Uh, so, stream. I will be giving away at the break a free copy of either the Five E or the Pathfinder Two version right. uh, of this so module. Reginald is going to pull out his holy symbol and Ooh. say a quick prayer to Pelor and attempt to turn undead on these four. <laughs> Bullshit. Yes. that and any that fail because of my level if they are cr one half or lower are instantly destroyed rules lawyer <coughs> excuse me oh, yeah. <laughs> i'm just kidding i'm kidding if they're um, higher than cr one half let's then see they're turned gotcha gotcha um looking i should know that but so light eight and yeah, they're not. Are the ones. So um, so yeah, they're they're not dead. But um, did, so did you already? Yeah, they're above yep, they're one turned. half. They're turned. Okay. Okay. Beautiful. Very nice. That's it. Thanks again, everyone, for joining. Appreciate it. Having a little Rudy, sound issues with the online. Um, static uh, initiative or rerolled everything? Yeah, I don't reroll. I probably should do that at some point, but it's static. Okay. Sorry, man. I could, if there's an easy way to do it, I don't mind like reshuffling it. If there's an easy way to. Oh, the, it's in the options of Fantasy Grounds. You can set it. What, what does everybody want? Quick vote. Does everyone well, want to shuffle? Only, or... The reason I asked is that if it's if it's static, this guy's going to fuck me again before I can get away from it. <laughs> oh, gotcha. With, with reroll every round, you really want to have the extension that adjusts uh, effect oh. durations. Yeah, if you don't mind, let's just we'll keep it. Yeah, we don't we don't have to. Okay. I just I just wondered if if that if you were doing it or not. Got it. All right, so this this thing comes close to Reginald. It does not like what you were doing. It is not turned and whoa whoa. Oh, sorry. Oh no, you're fine. Off the turn Got it. Again. No, it's all good. So oh, he uh, tries to again. tries to reach out to you. And he misses badly. And we're back to the top of the round, I think. Yep. And he is going to just try to keep doing what he's doing with every. Uh-oh. All right. And does some damage. Every is still doing all right. It's not the end of the world. And line number seven is going to look down at Udalin. I think he's turned. Yeah, you're right. So uh, remind me, does he run away? What does he What does he have to do? Yes. Uh, so a turned creature uh, must spend its turns trying to move as far away from you as it can, and it can't willingly move to a space within 30 feet of you. It can't take reactions. For its action, it can only use the dash action or try to escape from an effect that prevents it from moving. Okay, so he needs to, let's see, am I on the right guy, seven? He needs to run away. Yeah. And because he's not being forced, you do get an op shot, don't you? I always forget mm -hmm. that rule, but he's not being forced away. He's moving away, so don't you get an op shot for Udalin? Absolutely. Uh, I yeah, will, but I'll people, forego that. I don't yeah. want to take <laughs> people him People generally turn. don't take it because... Damn it, on. I was trying to act <laughs> dumb there. Okay. Um, so I guess he'll go as far as he can into the back of the classroom and and curl into a ball for a bit. 
and he's turned for Jesus 10 round, 10 seconds 10 rounds damn it okay uh line number eight he does not like what you're doing but he looks at you he raises his hand and then he says shit he's got to run away too <laughs> dashes away and every you are up and feeling nauseous feeling the worst for wear here yeah this is bad okay um i am going to use my inspiration to roll a get out of jail roll okay and i will be using acrobatics let me look to see if you um i just want to see what you need to escape um i need to uh, versus his strength check yeah i've uh yeah i've got it um you, you basically well yeah i guess i don't need to tell you but now i didn't i didn't use advantage but i guess i got it I guess. so yes so you are able to get this amorphous creature's hands and arms away from you and you are no longer grappled or restrained. Okay. Bonus action, cunning disengage. Okay. Cause, Cause that's how I do. Yeah, you do. And then I'm going to move to. There. Got it. Very nice. Oodlin. All right. I've only got eight strength after seeing my, my man get his strength withered away. I'm going to use Misty <laughs> Step. Yep. And just pop over there and let the cleric handle these dead bastards. I see what you're doing. All right. McClancy, welcome, man. And y'all, thanks so much for the cheer bits. I don't have my... Uh, sounds on All for the here. still want to defend my clerk so i apologize for not recognizing that i really Thanks appreciate that the right guy because it's been a long time very very nice mcclancy and attack him twice and that is a crit yeah nice I love fighters sometimes very nice oh and damn did some good day. damage Oh, I thought I was going to land on 20. God damn. <laughs> um, this guy's fucked up, though. No, that's going to be my turn, because I don't think we're going to get to take a short rest or anything. Don't need to be blowing all my skills quite yet. Gotcha. All right, Reginald is going to call down some Sacred Flame on number 19. Okay. All right, and he succeeds, but is that a cantrip, so nothing, or? Yeah, it's, it's all That's right. nothing. Sacred Flame, yep. All right, and he's going to try to return the favor, so he's going to attack you. Damn it. And he misses, and that is what he's going to do. And this guy does not like that ever he got out of his reach, so he's going to go right here not on top of you but right there and he's going to try to grapple you again he hits you what is my armor class three that's what i was wondering did you forget to put your armor on this morning no i have it on i have leather armor boo <laughs> i love that oh all right and lie number seven just keeps treading in place, hitting against the wall, hitting against the wall. And on number eight does the same. And Every, you are back. All right, well, since he came after me, I'm going to give him my business. And just remember, you're feeling very weak. Okay, he missed. You missed. I am I am not going to use my bonus action to attack him again, 
I'm going to use my bonus action to disengage. And Can you I do that when you're move. grappled and restrained? Nope. Oh, right. Never mind. All right. Fuck. Damn it. Oh, but I could have used it to dodge. Oh, well, I'm stupid. No, no, I uh, can't. No, 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 you can't use. You, that's you right. can't dodge. Yeah. Can you give me a d4, please? You yeah, are now Monday Night Football's on right now, so if I die, two strength. I'm just saying. Wow, I don't know strength. what else to do. I tried to get away and it didn't work. My, I think. Well, you could have oh, you gonna... you could have tried to get out of the grapple. I mean, right instead of, but. Right, but I yeah. It, I mean, look, it's all right. So Ujilin. Christmas. <laughs> all right, should I let the, that uh, that rogue die? No. I'll move over here. Okay. And I think the best thing I can do without hurting anybody is is what? I'm trying to move this uh box, but it's Do you want me to move it or what are you trying to do? Yeah, move it. I, it's going to be shattered to that's what I said to my prom date. You talking to do like this? <laughs> yeah, just so it's not hit. No, no, not like that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, shatter. I mean, you're trying not to hit. You don't want to hit. I don't want to uh, hit. Uh, yeah, uh, my uh, weakening friend. Yeah, so down there, right? Because that just will get the lie, That's right? It. Yeah, right there. Yep. Okay. And it looks like it's a con save. Oh, I didn't target him. I mean. What do you know? All right, I guess I'll try again. Yep. Ah, uh, he failed. I don't know if there's any damage if you miss. Let me. I forget. Or if it's half damage or what. Oh well, he failed, right? It's half. Oh, he failed. Yeah, he, he failed. Yeah. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. He failed. He failed. So we're good. Let's blow him up. Boom. Jesus. These Very guys are nice. tough. They are. All right. I think that's all I can do. Sorry. Does man. Shatter does Shatter do anything else like move them or no? It just uh let me take a look. It's been a while. I don't recall if it does, but Yeah, it's just thunder damage, didn't okay. say anything Got it. moves. Okay. All right. Rinse and repeat. Nice. Oh, and he goes down. And then I'll move here and take my second swing. Got it. Damn. Yeah. Oh, damn. My guy likes to kill shit. He, he's like full love and life right now. He's never had a better time. Doesn't understand why uh, <laughs> Irvery's looking so sick and down and out. <laughs> love and it. Am I the only person that lost strength? So far. <laughs> shit. So far. Listen to right. the positive uh, spin by the DM. So far. <laughs> so I'm going to come here and cast Cure on Every. Okay. He's looking pretty hurt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Max healing. Oh, nice. That also right. brings my strength back, or? Ah, I... uh, yeah, no. <laughs> no? Okay. They're turned still. Ah, oh, crap. So I was so excited. I was like, yeah, I'm coming, man. Come I'm right coming. I'm coming. ass, big time. <laughs> Well, I did the deck. All right. Um. Don't stub your toe. <laughs> now you um give me well, 
I don't have to tell you. I will just give me a second. Because um, I have a whole plan here. I'm just, yeah. So as you kind of as you're looking over at the creature and young, uh, the youngest Ebenezer, um, you you notice that the the creature, as I had mentioned, she's kind of was holding a package as if like showing it or, or reaching out to give it to young Ebenezer. Um, and, but, but you can tell it almost looks like there's a dark uh, lie that's enveloping the package that looks like it's blurring it to where you can't quite see what that package looks like. Um, and you can, as you're kind of looking over to it, it's almost as if the, the lie kind of pops, pops its head up at you and, but then immediately goes back down and, and kind of covers up this package. So it's really kind of like right on the creature and his outstretched arms. Can I uh, magic missile that bad package? Uh, maybe on your turn, cheater. <laughs> no, I was just okay. asking. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm, I'm assuming I'm not grappled and restrained because that guy's dead. That is true. All right, so my plan is... I'm going to um, move here, and then I am going to uh, stow my rapier and for free, and then I'm going to use my action to stow my dagger okay. and then that's it all right Oodlin. all right i'm looking at that package with a wary eye and i see that little peek out and he pe pops back in or covers it up i'm gonna launch uh three uh magic missiles at that thing okay um do me a favor just um well, actually, you know what? It doesn't matter that it doesn't have to attack. So it's a magic missile. So go ahead and it maybe target lie seven. Um, All right. And just go as ahead. As long and, as it doesn't wake him up. No, it won't. So just throw the throw the damage so we All can right. kind of hear the missiles come forth. That's what I'm talking about. All right. So these missiles slam into the the package and you can you can see and just this you can see the the lie that's surrounding the package kind of loosen and lose its grip and then it kind of melds into the floor and as it does that the two lies that were turned they they both turn around to all of you and look at you but then they seep into the floor as well so all of the f lies are now gone and as that happens nice. and the last one fades away, um, you can see that what the creature is offering is to young Ebenezer is a purple book with some type of gold rims and, and gold, um, you know, embossment, embroidery around it and arcane symbols on the cover. And, and if anyone would like to, you are welcome to try to determine what those arcane symbols are. So Udalin, you kind of you have to think for a while and and back to your your uh, schooling days. Yeah. You have, and and no one else can really picture it, but you can tell that these symbols are def definitely uh, necromancy symbols. Aha! Uh -huh. I think what's and that, going on here. That's right. So as you're as you're looking at the at the book and seeing that um, the the Scrooge from the present day that's up next to the ghost or uh, the spirit of Christmas past says, "I've forgotten this man." Mumble Scrooge. He offered to help me when I was older. Was there some price to that spirit? Scrooge asked, turning, but the spirit is gone. Oh, the spirit turns, but the spirit's gone. Um, and fades away and scrooge still kind of almost as if to himself says did i did i give something up he whispers 
as he wakes his, makes his way back through the doors and actually enters his bedroom. And as his feet cross the doorway, the schoolroom begins to fade. And Scrooge's eyes gravitate towards his desk in the corner of the room where the purple lot book lies. What did he want? Clearly drained from the strange experience, Scrooge returns to his bed and eventually falls asleep. And as that happens, you all can take a short rest, and Mr. Tui, you can go back to eight strength. Level up. <laughs> so we're we're just about, I mean we're about an hour and twenty in, but that's probably a really good um, break. If you guys are good for a break, um, we can do a ten minute. And I think five minutes in, I will come back on and do the giveaway for the um, for the. So if you guys all want to come back and if you want to participate in the giveaway, the folks playing the game, you can as well. But I will run the giveaway in a, about five or six minutes from now. Sounds so yeah, I'll be back. We will see right. everyone shortly and see if I can get a timer going. One second. And can we do hit day in the short rest? Uh, yeah, it's a short rest, so you can. Yep, absolutely. All right, so let's do zero. Oh, it didn't, we'll do oh, that was five minutes time. for the timer there. We'll start, and let's see if I can add this. There we go. Let's add snaz countdown timer. Is that I can only remember what the source is here. Image media source. Where it was media. Where was text? That one more time. See if I just missed it. Countdown. Hope you guys are enjoying it. Uh, it's been a while since I've DM'd a 5e game, but it's fun. Having a good time. I'm just trying to find that source. Let's transform. Yeah, it must be a different type of source that I'm missing. Let's try one more image media source. Countdown. I think if I do this, browse. But if we just do the two local file, that's no bueno. Oh, local file. Yeah, local file. Well, heck, it's been so long since I've had to set this up. Oh, well. We'll be back and I'll announce it before I come back on, but we get about three and a half, four minutes and I'll come back on and announce it and give you guys plenty of room, plenty of time. I'll be back.
I see him talking on stream, but I don't hear him. Oh. Yeah. No, I use deep uh, deep bot. Yeah, since the beginning. Yeah, I'm good. I'll, I'll let people in the chat. I'm. I don't need to participate. I am in the same boat. Yeah, same. Yep, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna participate. I've never used that one, so. Another way to do it, since <clears throat> since there's only a few people, is just have the people type in chat, I want in, or something, and then roll a die and pick the person. Message blocked from viewer. What the hell? Oh, you the reason yours didn't work gliding is you did seven and it only supports four, six, eight, ten, to twenty.
limiting to those dice is just stupid. Sorry. I think they have to type exclamation point ticket space one. Yeah, that's what it says. <laughs> you're going to get away. You're going to save yourself 16 bucks, my friend. <laughs> Just the players. <laughs> well, Ace or Sin says she doesn't use Fantasy Grounds, so. Min Clark is in. Nice. <laughs> you are a mathematician. <clears throat> Hello. That worked. That was perfect. Awesome. <laughs> Congrats, man. Yes. Five E the five E version gets you a bigger kickback, right, than the Pathfinder one. Oh, I thought there was I saw a second name on the on the Pathfinder. Oh, cool. Fifteen percent. Oh. Was that a was that a halftime break? Okay. Sounds good. I like it. I like it so far. Yurash hates it. No, I'm That's just starting. Right. <laughs> I'm just causing trouble. I'll bring it. No, I just did a little arcane recovery. Oh, yeah, that's right. I got to throw hit dice. You said that. Yep. Is Donald going to spend hit die? No bards. No, no bards. Yes. Yeah, I wonder if the some of the stuff doesn't have triggers set up. Well, yeah, hit die usage doesn't currently have a trigger. Nice. I, I am fully healed and only use two of my seven hit die. Yeah. Oh, Min Clark says that link isn't working for him, Gwydion. Is that is it possible you have that's a Discord invite that's um, expired? I threw the link that I have up there. 
Try that one. There, man. Yeah, he's just, or she, I shouldn't generalize, just got in. Cool. Hey, you win a prize. Oh, can't can't claim it? All right, fuck off. Good night. Right. <laughs> Oodalan goes full uh, Legolas and just slides off like he's sliding off an elephant. <laughs> Yeah, I accidentally threw it. I moved my um, tower over on top of the chat, so it's not hidden behind my character sheet. And I, I just, like, accidentally threw it into there instead of in the chat. It makes sense. Reginald is slightly portly. He's a fat elf.
na 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 It's a Christmas festive adventure. Oh, it's snowing. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the thing moving, that's so awesome. It's a marble. That's great. It's amazing what you can do with Fantasy Grounds now. Right. My favorite Christmas movie, Yippie Ki Yay. Mother. God damn it, I was muted that whole time. Ugh. Oh, no. What I get for muting. Uh... Oh man, and all that. So sorry, Min Clark. My fault. Um, all right. Well, shoot, that's not going to be good for the uh, YouTube stream. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, that's let's all right. Let's get this guy. So sorry about that, Min Clark. Uh, why is Discord muted though? Let's see. Now you can hear me. So Robber, somebody say something or Stooner. Fighter. Uh, okay, that's working. Yeah. That's working. So he should. Min Clark, let us know if you can't, because he should be able to now. All right. So that did some damage, but certainly not what you would expect. Um. Yeah, I'm level seven. I. Damn well at this point know that uh, swords are only so good against skeletons and that I should be bashing him with his own leg. It'd probably work out better. <laughs> but I currently yes. don't have his leg. <laughs> Sorry about that, Mick Clark. So... That's what I get yeah, for uh, yeah. not I'll, I'll not DMing for a while. I'm gonna bash you with your own leg, bitch. <laughs> Blunt, yeah. And I'll bash you in the face with a shillelagh. <laughs> I'm gonna right. smash you in the face with my shillelagh. All right. Uh, all right. So he. Doing nothing. He's staring in the window. Every. Okay, well, I'm going to rush up there with my piercing weapons. And do the same damn thing. All right. Ah! 
Oh, come on! Damn it, Jim. I was gonna have sneak attack and everything. It's a big. All right. Even so... our two casters all by themselves with two of those things. <laughs> They're fine. Scourge will help them. Nice. So this guy goes. Right there, and he's going to, in honor of someone on this stream, any mini. Yes. <laughs> What's that on your shoulder? And he's any mini in Reginald, so he is. He pull. He has this huge great shovel in his hand that he swings down at you. Son of a bitch! He's gonna take his inspiration and reroll. <laughs> um, so guy at the top remorse number three so this guy is the same thing as this massive shovel and he swings at what do you know every so every oh so he swings at you ah and he misses the shovel right, whizzes over your head oodlin all right, Oodlin's target in uh, remorse number nine. Okay. And uh, he's going to do, uh, see if a little fire makes its way down its pike. Fire! Don't be Dexy. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, he fails. Don't be Dexy? Is that what nice. it is? Yeah, it's a Dex so. save. I like it. All right, that's my turn. Don't be Dexy. I like it. All right. I don't think I've ever heard anybody say it. <laughs> God damn it. If he would have just moved like one more over to here, but he wasn't smart enough. So this guy is going to bide his time for a minute and might be reading something, but you don't know. He's got his shovel out. <laughs> you don't and um, Reginald, you are up. Uh, Reginald is going to turn to uh, Udalin and say, uh, you might want to back up a little bit. And uh, he's going to cast Spirit Guardians. Oh, oh snap. Yeah. I love that. And I used uh, Spirit Guardians to break one of Gideon's games that we weren't supposed to win. You're you a did. turtle, I think, too. Right? I was a turtle, too, yeah. So I just. Right, like, I remember that. Tortoise form and spear guardians, and we want to fight that is literally meant to be impossible. So I've got that on me now, and. Uh, I will. How big is it? Their turn. It's 15 feet centered on me, so it'll get both of them at the start of their turn. So it would, it would be 50, yeah. It would go out to just about there, yeah. It's showing as a token. It shouldn't do that, should it? Oh, well. Oh, there we go. Now, it's, yeah, it's, for me, it was showing as a big token. That works. All right. Now, is this one that there's some, um, is there an effect, or is there a, an extension for this, or are you just going to target them both? Uh, there's an extension. Um, it doesn't do anything on my turn. It'll be on their turn. Okay, hopefully I have it. So, all right, um, Donald, you are up. I'll be looking back and be like, yeah, he's got it. Time for me to get this guy. Maybe if they'll let, okay, I'm still targeting. I was clicking the wrong buttons. It's, it's me. It's... We should uh, we should back up and draw him into Spirit Guardians. Yeah. Oh, shit. Nice. You've been rolling well tonight. Um, yeah, it, nice. you can tell me that on your turn, because otherwise I'm metagaming. I've been. Well, no, like... it's a, uh, it's a. Uh, you can speak when it's not your turn. You, you yeah. can say, you can tell people to do stuff when it's not your turn. That's fair. I totally just attacked twice instead, though. <laughs> um, but I will action surge. Oh. And disengage. Oh, I can't. Can you move my guy back? Uh. 10 feet. Yes. 
thank you. Yeah, I tried to move my guy and I accidentally clicked the thing and I didn't know how to get it off my screen. But yes, that'll be my turn. Now remind me, why is it trying to not click? Oh, there we go. There we go. All right. Henry. Okay, I'll do one attack. Mm -hmm. and then I will bonus action disengage. Whoa. Might want to just remove the spirit guardians. I'll I'll manage it. It is a okay. token and it interrupts with interferes with clicking. All right. It was cool for a, for a minute, but we're all good. And I do then, like those things. I guess um, you know in the in the future I could put that on a different layer, right, guys? Uh, not the token one, but you can use an okay. image file to throw it on as a new layer, yes. I'll do that some other time. All right, sorry, Rob. Nope, no problem. Oh, okay, the remorse, um, number uh, nine. So at the start of his turn, he's going to feel some remorse is what's going to happen. Oh, jeez. So yes, wow. he rolled a zero. <laughs> Uh, that was oh, a good oh, roll. Oh, awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> That's what it is. All right, so this guy is going to... He's not liking that at all. So he is going to try to shovel you. I love Who's Gwydion's style of DMing is so, because he's so disappointed when he, <laughs> he fails to kill us. I mean, he's going to go he here, on his brother. here and he's deciding this shovel is so big and so large that he is going to strike from 10 feet away. Um, Did he come into the thing, though? Get a little, get a little closer. Nope. Oh, sorry. D d did he? Um, if Matt Curie says he's in there, then he can... He's if he needs to take damage. Guardians. Okay, okay. Boo, we didn't go far enough. That's you fine. One more down. And he hit Scroogle. Now, another example of not metagaming, Ooh. but just playing would be he could have yelled at us, come come down five more feet. He could have done that. Yeah. And he does, yeah, 18 points of damage as this great shovel comes crashing down on your head. Oodlin. Uh oh, somebody's doing some funky stuff down here. All right, I'm going to uh, target Shatter on the two uh, nine and ten. Yes. Okay. And let's just uh, blast these guys with some thunder. Bam. Oh. Damn it. <laughs> Take they half. still get half, though? Oh, yeah. One of them, you know, number nine is like, you know, you see a, you know, some some of his rib cage you know, falls to the ground and his jaw is like barely hanging on. He's he's hurting. Oh, he's going to get the spirit guardian on him. Oh, it's disappointing. Oh, damn. That's a broken spell. Not allowing it in my next game. <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. What are these things? What do they do? Remind me what um, are they uh, like? Yeah. So spirit guardians summons uh, spirits to help you. They fly around you. So you can be whatever shape you want. Um, and uh, they fly around you kind of like a tornado at 15 feet. And whenever anybody starts their turn in that range uh, and, and enemy, or if they enter that range on for the first time on their turn, uh, then they got to make a save. Got it. Or get That's smacked. awesome. And they awesome. have damage if they make their save. So even right. it's damage. Got it. Oodlin, this guy is going to try to like swing at you and, and he like cr it. crunches, crunches you for 11 points of damage as this shovel just kind of jams you right in the shoulder and is just trying to like hit you into the ground. But you're still up. And Reginald's up. Right. Uh, so Reginald. Is going to. Uh, he is 
going to cast Bless okay. on uh, three of us. Oh, no, please. No, he B. can't do that. B. B less. He can't do that because he's already concentrating on spirit guardians, and that would. Uh, That's okay. That. It's okay. You can do that. Yeah. I'll allow it. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. DM's so, allowing it. Yeah, I'm going to just straight up uh, sacred flame this guy in front of me. Yep. Ooh, I bet they hate that. Nice, as you know, this thing almost like almost drops to a knee. It wobbles and almost drops its huge shovel, but it barely holds on. It's it's up, but I'm gonna move back. not by much. And I am going to take the dodge action. Nice. Move there nice. and attack it. You are correct. I like you the wanna... action better. Okay. Oh, that's some janky shit. Yeah. I like to attack better than I like to dodge. He doesn't take an op shot for moving away out of the 10 foot reach? Oh, yes, he would have. I would have. It's a good point. Thank you for reminding me. Um, Keep it me... fair. Keep it fair. That's right. Let me do that for a moment. Uh, let me make... I always try to do this so it doesn't amplify anything. Uh oh. Nasty. Let me go back to you. Okay. Yeah. My first attack. Second attack. Oh! Very nice. And second wind. Oh, second win. Got it. Very nice. Long rest. I like it, Yurash. I don't like it. <laughs> In chat. I love it. <laughs> Every. All right. Well, now hey, he's jumper. used his reaction. Nice to see you, man. That means I can attack him twice and just run away. So I shall do such. He has a lair action where he gets two reactions. Uh-huh. Well, I have a lair action where I don't ever fucking hit. <laughs> oh my god. Now, can we can we try that again? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Max. Right. Oh, then, nice, Max. I'm going to move down here. Now, I'm wondering should I move in line or should I I think I'm going to go here so that I can go down the alley. Protect Oodlin by going there a little bit. And in fact, I might even go here. Oh, sorry. Got it. Yep. We call that the blocker bee move. I'm a blocker bee. Because <laughs> now, right. now dipshit three has to come into the sphere of influence or whatever it's called. I don't think that's what it's called. Spirit guardians, <laughs> maybe. Cone of silence. <laughs> Oh no, and this thing just. Is it? It's not dead yet? Oh my god. Well, when you roll an 11. I, look look at that. It's got like one one little bar left. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. Uh, so he's going to keep doing what he's doing. He's not happy with this guy that's like doing this spirit crap with him. So he's, he's swinging his shovel. Ah, and he just. He misses, but fortunately, with Donald Scroogle next to him, he hit. No, he just misses. Uh, let's see, this guy goes 5, 10, and he's going to do, what is he going to do? He's going to do he's this. Spirit Guardians first. Yes, he is. Oh, yeah, man, he almost it. goes down. And, and based on the any mini roll, and this was not, uh, he's he's going after you, Mr. Reginald. He any mini and he, yeah, he just doesn't like you. 
Wow, Here but he still can't hit. <laughs> yeah. Still can't hit, though. Oodlin. Miss it, Noonan. Yeah, exactly. Noonan. <laughs> Miss it. Miss it. All right, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to take this dude out uh, down below. Uh... Okay. There we go. And I'm going to drop a little uh, magic missile into him to make sure. Nice. No, nothing sideways happens here, you know. Oh, and snap. this thing, <laughs> it, yeah, you, you made sure, but this thing just kind of crumples to the ground in front of you and splinters apart in many, many pieces. You know, I did say, oh, snap, so. <laughs> wow. All right. And Remorse 10 is still up a bit. So he is going to change his target to what's in front of him. Come at me, bro. And Take swing. Damage. Come at me, bro. Oh, he already did, didn't he? Yeah. He took 14. Oh, shit. Nice. You're way ahead of that. Yeah, minimum damage. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah. Wow. All right. <laughs> and he passes his turn. Player dice mod. I know, right? All right. Hey, Marmus, uh, man. Well, Good to see you. Thanks for coming by. Him and, uh, Sacred Flame. We're going to have like five minutes on the stream for the YouTube video where I forgot to unmute myself. No biggie. All right. Donald. Come on, Kerr. There it is. Double swing for the win. It has hit hit. Oh, it's going. Take him out. And this yeah. thing like stumbles and hits the side of one of the buildings, taking like a portion of the building with it. And this, uh, as it crumbles to the ground. And that will be my turn. And that's a good turn. Every. All right. Let's just see if I can do anything here. Oh my god, I don't know what to do. <laughs> oh. I'm not dead yet. You know, you know when I had sneak attack um before the stream when I practiced it. Oh crap. You can if you want to roll you want to roll a, just an extra? What is it? A D? Is it a D eight? No, no. I'm. I'm. I don't get it. I. I oh, sorry, I'm, sorry. Yeah. Got every it. time I've attacked, there's right. been nobody next to what I'm attacking. Yeah, yeah. I got gotcha. you. And not having advantage. Yep. Right. <laughs> All right. Uh, Udenlan is going to uh, do a little thunder damage on this boy. All right. He deserves it. Crack! Ah, oh, not so much, but... Got it, Min Clark. Good luck. May the force yeah. be with you. Nice. Uh, so give me give me the killing blow here. What uh, what happens here? A little bit of the sound of thunder rolls through this, the alleyway here and just shatters his bones, and they just flay against the walls and drop to the ground. Nice. So as the last remorse uh, falls to the ground... Scrooge backs away from the light of the window, quiet concern carved into his worn face. Spirit, what, what is wrong with the boy? He looks poorly. And Scrooge rubs his hands together. He says, terrible, terrible things to have to face the end so soon. Scrooge turns away and searches for the giant, but alas, he finds himself alone. He staggers away into the street, glancing back over his shoulder. Scrooge wanders through the streets, pausing at the square's fountain at its broken angel. 
and he kind of looks up as you guys are kind of following him through town and, and he not looking at anyone but himself he says i always meant to have that fixed he mutters to no one as he walks through his hometown scrooge begins to notice how dilapidated the buildings have become and eventually both you and scrooge make your way back to the uh to his home and it's a long long trek back to the uh front gate and after some time as you follow him back to the uh front gate of his manor it stands open but the guardhouse is is quiet and ebenezer is too deep in thought to notice he heads inside and climbs the stairs to the entry hall Give me one second. Why is that? Uh oh, I think I'm not. Oh, so he um, goes into the entry hall. Um, but he's not alone. The despondent Scrooge gasps as he looks up to find a figure cloaked in black. How 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 did you get? Scrooge words trails off as he notices the bony hand poking out from the robes of this creature in front of him. The air goes silent before this figure as even the wind dies down as it draws close, leaving nothing of life behind. He gulps. Are you the final spirit? That of Christmas future? The cloaked figure nods wordlessly, and he looks a little bit like this. Showing the stream real quick. Um, and, so, and he says, Scrooge says, am, am I to follow? Scrooge gulps, you? The figure nods again, doesn't say a word, raising its skeletal hand to point beyond Scrooge. Ebenezer turns and looks out over the town of Grace and finds it dead. What was once a hamlet nuzzled into the snow has turned into a cold, pitiless grave. Doors lie torn from their frames and windows are smashed in. The buildings are husks strewn across the land like skulls half buried in the snow. Above, above it all, the perpetually overcast sky is a dull, angry red, as if just beyond the clouds, the sky burns. Scrooge cries, I did not mean for this, just my body aches. I can feel myself growing old, but, but I didn't want this. The spirit turns and leads the way into the manor, now lit with torches that burn a terrible red. Give me one second. You guys can put yourself where you'd want to be real quick if you want. Um, so one of the pedestals displays a purple book. The words scrawled on its cover seem alive in the hellish light. Put you guys all where you think you'd be. As you enter the main hall, a tall, thin shape comes floating towards you. From the far hallway, it steps forward into the light, its face emaciated, like there's barely enough skin to cover the bones beneath. Ebenezer gives out a sickening groan as he recognizes his own visage twisted into something wretchedly inhuman. Spirit, he cries out, I am not the man I was. I will not become this, this monster. He turns to clutch at the spirit, but it's gone. Scrooge's future self floats like a lifeless corpse, moving as if puppet controlled by an evil hand, but then pauses. Its milky eyes turn and seem to search the room with a vision it should not have. Finally, it raises one bony hand and <clears throat> seems, and with a sharp motion, cuts through the air. 
You feel something tear within you like a curtain ripped violently from a window and you look up to see the dead eyes of the lich staring right back at you. Its lipless mouth cracked into a hideous smile. And this is what you see. Oh, yes. God. Uh, I'm going to pause because I have to do this real quick. This is not going to happen. So one second. Fog is flowing behind him. Epic. What's very, cool is it's actually done. it's actually in front of him, not Thanks. behind him. But it looks it looks like it is behind him. That's what's cool. All right. The only reason I'm doing this real quick is because once again, sounds crashed. All right. Where did he go? Uh oh. Wonder if I put. All right, let me get him on the map. Oh no, he is. All right. So. I will do the roll initiative as you guys are facing the Lich Scrooge. Now, question. Yep. How long has it been since the skeletons? Because the Spirit Guardians last 10 minutes. Yeah, I mean, I as you guys walk through town, I, I would say it's it's been probably about that much time. I'm not trying to metagame or yeah, hamstring you. But yeah, I think no, that's it's... that's fine. I just wanted yeah. to make sure I was No, it's a good, very good question. Uh, let's see. All right. So. This, He's first cheater. Yes, he is. Um, <laughs> He's a cheater. Well, after we whipped those skeletons, you know, you have to adjust that shit. That's right. <laughs> yeah, right? All right. So he is going to. Move so much to do here. So he moves here, and he is going to cast a spell. Let's see. Let me check this. This is how long. Uh, yep, he can just get all of you. And as he mumbles a few words, an enormous fireball comes from his hand. that you had the... What happened? Started it. You, I, I didn't have what? Uh, myself. Uh, I'm underneath Scrooge, apparently. Underneath so, uh, Scrooge? Oh! Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. did not so see Donald, that. you did not have target. Yeah. Okay, one second. Uh, you gotta re-roll all of it. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. I'm liking my damage. Yeah, nice. to make sure I only have him targeted. So. And I'm not doing, I don't know how the, I don't know why it did the fumble table already, but it shouldn't have. All right. So he passes his turn to Reginald. Oh, 
feel so much better. Ah. Nice. That was huge. And um, were you, Udalin, were you the one? Were you down? Were you unconscious? Yeah, I was unconscious, so I should be prone. I'll yeah, make myself prone. you got it? Okay. All right, great. Wow, Every nicely done, man. That was good. Oh, you got spiritual weapon. Got you up there. You want me to throw one in there? You just, yeah, you can just use that. I guess that's good. All right. So every and, um, yep. You put spirit guardians, meaning it to be spiritual weapon. Oh yeah. It's a good point. Okay. Once again, this guy not next to anybody. And you and and you do see just as you move up there out of the and you kind of saw it coming in, but you see um, the purple book up here, uh, just in the corner. So just anyway, but yeah, go for it. Do what you're gonna do. shit someone says target the book so I will target the book uh can I do that uh you can guys give me give me one quick minute hold on I need a quick second hold on Book's about 30 feet from you, if that makes a difference. Oh, no, I thought he was holding the book. No, I was showing I was... you up in the corner. I was pointing to the... Oh, shit. Uh... One second. It's okay. Hold on. Well, I can't, I can't go do that anyway on this turn. So I'm just going to take my other dagger thing, which even if I hit him is going to be nothing. But I miss. <laughs> Janky. Thank you. Yeah, I'll dash. And then I'll use my extra attack to attack the book. Who would you like me to target? Um, so as you get up there, give me one second. So go ahead and um, what what are you going to um, use? You're just going to swing at it or, or or what have you? Yeah, I'm going to try and chop it in half with my long sword. Okay, so as you do that, um, you do you uh, you cut it in half. And the thing just totally, you know, immediately just splits splits apart. <clears throat> excuse me but after you do that the the lich kind of looks over at you and laughs <laughs> you thought <laughs> and and just shakes his head at you as he goes back and every as you as you're standing next to the lich it it suddenly strikes you it has a um medallion on it that is it looks exactly the same as the one that um lich or the scrooge is wearing okay all right that will be my turn i'm just a dumbass no <laughs> No, no, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. My, my character wouldn't have thought. I didn't think any right. different, so neither did my character, right? Yeah, yeah I would have done the same, but uh, I'm going to stand up because I'm prone. Actually, I'm going to do this while you do that. That's fine. Um, I think it's this. Yep, you can do that. prone to standing up. That's correct. Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to do this. Okay. All right, I'm going to uh, tell Scrooge, hey, take off your medallion while I blast this guy with the magic missile. I'm going to announce to the party at, during the fight that I happen to believe that this medallion is his phylactery. So we need to get it or destroy it. And I'll try to target it with my magic missile, but I don't know if that will matter. So, so you you hit it, but the the missiles seem to go right through the medallion as almost as if the medallion's not it's not there or it's not. It's it's real. You can tell it's real, but for some reason you don't feel like you can interact with it at all. Interesting. All right, I would rip it off of uh, Scrooge's neck, but I already told him to remove it and see what he does. So, do those magic missiles hit the lich then? They do. Yes. Didn't it? Did it not damage? Well, uh, oh, did you? Oh, got it. Got it. Got it. Yep. Oh. So okay. yes. I thought you, I can, drag, you can just drag them all. You can on. drag it on. Drag I'll it do on. that. Oh, he's still healthy. I did a oh, little damage. A, he's it, immune to it's that scratched. shit too. Holy no, 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 no. I mean, no, it, he, it, he it, it. It did some. He, he took it. <laughs> Um, it did some damage. He's light. He's not light. <laughs> That's my brown um, day's head. It was, did, did a little damage. Um, so, so when you kind of ask Scrooge to, uh, to grab his medallion and, and throw it down, um, he looks at you and he says, but, but I am bound to it. Oh, I, I, I don't, I don't want to die. Oh, you, the, the bad part of you will die. Let it go. Give me, um, let's see, what would that give me? It, it, however you want, give me, how do you, do you want to try to um, persuade him? Do you want to try intimidation? I'll, I'm not going to request a roll. You can decide what role you want, but give me a roll in the tower of kind of what you want to, how do you want to approach this with uh, Ebenezer? Use a grocery roll. Offer him a Snickers. Snickers. That's right. <laughs> uh, I'll try uh, persuasion, even though I don't have any bonus in that, but I'll try it. Okay. Okay, so you, I mean, you feel like he's, he's definitely considering, like he's, you can tell him staring and thinking. I mean, he's still shaking his head, but you feel like, you feel like he's considering it. And as that happens, um, it goes back to, to Scrooge's, Lich Scrooge's turn. And you kind of see him kind of like shimmer for a second. And kind of he looks up and you can tell he is completely and fully healthy again. And as that happens... He does. That is 100% fucked up. Right? And so you, you see him mumble some more words as he targets. He can get three of you in this. I don't think he can quite get my friend Every. Um, take off the spirit. And this noxious cloud gathers around you. Oh, shoot. 
Well, I don't know. Was that better or worse for you guys? I accidentally clicked the save twice. <laughs> Let me look. Uh, duh, 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 duh. What did it do? It was worse for me. Did you all six out? So you failed. Beginning success, success. What's the, what's the target? How does he get everybody? Because it's a it's a twenty foot radius, and he can cast it up to one hundred and fifteen feet. So I th I rolled a twenty right, on, on my get, first roll. How did he get Donald and? 20 I meant Oodlin, Reginald, and oh, sorry, you're right. I, I I missed over here. It should have been these two. I missed him way up there. Thank you. Uh, so what happened for Reginald and Oodlin? Should have been success. And then a failure for Reginald. But then I wasn't even targeted. I, I know because I, he was casting it. Like my intention was to like cast it here. I didn't think I could get. Initially, I was thinking these were all the players, so I was not looking. Oh, to so you would so have got Donald. Then. Yep, 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 yep. Gotcha. So let's do. Yeah, that's kind of where I was going. Oh yeah, so that, that, I, that's what I was missing. Was I never saw the circle or whatever? No, I should have done that. Um, so hold on, I need to untarget Donald. But I need to make sure. I don't know how to force the save. Yeah, you can just remove half, I guess. If it... All right, let's just do this. Yep, let's do this. So Reginald drops down Oodlin. So I need to take off basically, what, 14 from you? Correct. He, you were the one that did half. Okay. All right. I'm glad they included healing potions in this uh, backpack. Oh, and, no. And, and, Re <laughs> and Reginald makes his first death save. And Every you are up as Scrooge continues to stare at his medallion and okay. kind of shake, shake his head and clutch it. I, have, keep... I am a completely non-magical, non-anything character, so I'm just going to continue to try to beat on him. Okay. I, mean, I can't do anything else. Yep, I'm just gonna be. I'm. I'm an absolute zero here. Uh, All right, Mr. Scrugel. Any of us have magic weapons, so. Well, but he spells will work on him. But I. I, I want to say that the. I want to say that killing him isn't the goal. We got to do something gotta, with his phylactery. We got to get the amulet off of Scrooge. I right. So oh yeah, I'm standing right next to him. He's definitely eyeing and and he's no, he's thinking not about it. Scrooge, I know. Scrooge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Yep, yep. Mr. Donald. Sorry, I'm sitting here talking away and oh, oh, okay. I figured the wrong you <laughs> push to talk button. <laughs> no problem. Uh, yeah, I am going to look at Scrooge and be like, man, we really need you to take that thing off or we're all going to die and you're going to get to watch your city burn like you did before. That made you so depressing. So <laughs> depressed. Like, we need to do this, man. So how do you want to uh, play that with him? What, what type of tact do you want to take? Uh, just straight up honesty. I don't have any extra skills or anything, so... I don't, I don't know. Uh, I mean, you can, you can use intimidation. You can use or whatever you want it, whatever plus, type of. Like I have plus to intimidation, but I'm not trying to. Well, yeah, I'm trying to. You could, it. you could do that and you could do it, do that in the tower. I'm, I'm not trying to scare him. Though. I'm going to beat the shit out of him. I'm trying to scare him into, like, <laughs> you know, he's going to ruin his own life if he doesn't help us out. So. In my brain, though, I'm leaning towards beating him horribly, though. <laughs> nice. So as you, as you do that, um, you know, Ebenezer stares at the Lich and he looks at you and, he, and he, he sobs for a moment and then he grips the medallion and he rips it in half. And the Lich realizes what it's trying to do and it 
it tries to hurl itself at Scrooge, but he's too far away and he does it too late. And with, <clears throat> with a sudden snap, the medallion breaks and Scrooge himself collapses. And the Lich just, you, you see him like pause for a moment at, just in mid stride and he breaks in half, just like the medallion did. Oh, and as the, sweet. As the Lich's body collides with the hard floor, smoke billows out, pressing back the red lights, signaling the end of this future. When the smoke clears, you stand in the dark entry of the Hall of the Manor. Pale moonlight streams through the window and rests upon Scrooge's body at your feet. The silence is interrupted by footsteps from the far hallway. The creature steps out of the shadows and stands before you, his too perfect face etched in fury. You have ruined something decades in the making, he whispers with a voice of deepest contempt. I will have to settle for the soul that is due. And he takes a step towards the body of Scrooge on the floor. But as he does so, suddenly the massive front doors fly open and a flurry of snow heralds a strong elderly man with a white beard. His eyes dance like snowflakes around him, and he holds a small smile in the corner of his lips. And this, you recognize him as the physician who uh, you met in the beginning of the night. The physician's voice echoes through the hallway. This soul is yours by right for now, but it is my right to grant the redeemed rebirth. The creature seems shocked, but manages to glare at the elderly man. His, his soul was as black as they come. The elderly man raises a hand to one ear and leans forward. What is that you said? Did he ask forgiveness? Did he wish to change? The creature goes still and fumes as he realizes his mistake. The elderly man merely taps his chin. If only we had someone here who could testify to it, someone who could bear witness for him. With a smile, he suddenly realizes you're standing there. Oh, how convenient. Perhaps you could help settle this. Tell me, what say you? And he looks around at all of you. Has Scrooge been redeemed? Absolutely. Yes. And so, Reginald how do we... A little bit in groans because he's still unconscious. I, I was going to say before... <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, the elderly <laughs> man's eyes sparkle and he turns back to the creature with a broad smile. Well then, that's enough for me. The smile vanishes as the elder's eyes harden, and he commands in a voice of complete and utter authority, Now leave. A sudden gust of wind bellows through the front door, filling the hall. Snow and wind fly towards you, and the elderly man, but somehow, bend and shift around you, barely ruffling your clothes. The wind doesn't bend for the creature and his hands turn to claws as he desperately tries to scratch for any purchase against the driving gale. His fingers dig furrows in the stone, but it isn't enough. In a blink, he is flung back into the shadows and gone. The wind continues howling and snow begins to choke the air. Soon all you can see or hear is the all-enveloping storm. Then the howling stops. As the blinding white fades, you open your eyes and realize it isn't snow, but the bright light of a new morning pouring through the window. You stand in the entry hall, which looks just as it did when you first stepped foot minutes before midnight. And as that happens, the physician walks up to Reginald and say, you know, we can't have any heroes die or be unconscious in this fine morning. And he touches Reginald and Reginald, you are fully healed. Nice. Super cool. Suddenly a voice cries out from above. Merry Christmas. There's the sound of feet rushing down the stairs, followed by someone clearly slipping and sliding down the last few steps. And you're all now in Scrooge's uh, manor. Scrooge comes rushing onto the balcony in his robes and nightcap, carrying a jingling box under one arm, his medallion noticeably gone, missing. He stares around as if seeing it for the first time, and he glances down at you and says, Merry Christmas. Well, wait. How did you get in here? He's kind of looking at all of you like, where did you come from? How did you get in here? We walked right through the front gate. Yeah, T Timothy sent us. He says, ah, bah, who cares? He laughs with a wave of his hand. It's Christmas. He rushes down the stairs, takes his coat and a large sack from the closet. I have so much to do and so little time. 
tell me, are you available for hire? I'll pay you well. You can start with this. He tosses the jingling box and sack at you without a second thought and throws on his coat. Scrooge takes you on a journey through grace, wishing Merry Christmas to many confused townsfolk. In no time, he's completed a whirlwind tour of the town. His sack is crammed with gifts and food. The box of coins is half as heavy as it once was. Before you know it, you're outside the Cratchit's house. Thank you for all your help, but I can take it from here. He throws his sack, stuffed to bursting over his shoulder, glancing at the box containing the remaining gold and waves a hand. Oh, just keep it. He glances, he places his hand on the doorknob and scrunches up his face in a scowl he used to wear. And he says, oh, wait, his mask replaced by a full and grateful smile. Merry Christmas to you. He pushes his false face back on and pushes through the door. You watch through the frosted window as he goes in, muttering under his breath, like the clutching covetous sinner he once was. But it doesn't last long. Soon he can't keep up the charade and he starts giving away everything he can. He vigorously shakes Bob Cratchit's hand and makes promise to him about the future and his son's health. Soon you feel a warmth radiate from the window that has nothing to do with the hearth. As you watch it, it flows over you and you cannot imagine being cold again. With a start, you realize you're not alone. The elderly man is standing beside you, smiling at the scene. You've done a great thing here, he says. Such as good is rare and precious. The echo of your deeds will be felt throughout grace, though they will never know it was you. But I will know, and I'll remember. The wind blows, the snow flurries, the elderly man is gone, and from inside the house, you hear a tiny voice say, God bless us, everyone. God bless us, everyone. The end. Ha <laughs> yeah. That was yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's good. You guys, uh, that was, that was fun. That was, uh, that was a pretty, pretty good adventure. I liked it. That was good. I like the way they did it. They, they took a classic and put a D&D spin on it. Yeah, it was a hard one. <laughs> there are some things that I, you know, I, I had to change a bit. I don't know. Maybe I should have made the lich. I, I was I was worried that was going to be an immediate TPK. I mean, Jesus, that thing. There was a couple things I held back on, but. Um, but anyway, it definitely yeah, it was, could have been an immediate TPK. Like absolutely. I mean, even just the fireball. I'm like, holy well, crap! That put. Ex- unexperienced adventurers wouldn't know to to get the phylactery. They would just try to kill the lich. Yeah, yeah, probably, probably yeah. true. Cool. It would take several more rounds to figure out the connection with the book and the amulet and the Scrooge and the. By that time, you might be fully wiped out. Yeah, and in that time, I was going to say, yeah, I don't think it would have taken because he literally heals a hundred percent every every round. Oh my god! <laughs> I mean, bullshit. I know. Uh, I was like, funny. I was like, holy crap! Thanks, high jumper. Um, but. Uh, yeah, that yeah, was good. Um, trying to think of what else I changed. There were a couple things I, I modified in there, but overall. How did you do the, um, on the stream, how did you do current image? I, I literally, in this, I, I probably caused myself too much heartache doing all this, but it's basically, I, it's just separate images that I set oh, you just and I had to manually chain. click. Oh, wow. You know, I'm just. That's hardcore. That, that I probably shouldn't really have done that, but. Yeah. And I, I forgot a couple of them, but it worked pretty well. But uh, yeah, and you, it was fun. you had the images because you made the module, so you yeah, because the yeah, the person couldn't do that. No, they, that's true. They well, they, they, I guess they could take like a screenshot and do it. Yeah, that's true. But um, yeah, well, there, there's a will, there's a way, right? <laughs> that's right. Thanks, Arash. I appreciate the bits, man. Oh yeah, well, that was fun. I wish I would have uh, turned on my mic right after the uh, break. Damn it! I'm gonna have like three or four minutes of silence on on the. Uh, video but that's all right it's all good time to practice your editing and just put a little tag up on the video <laughs> there you go i forgot to turn my mic on yeah exactly exactly could i cool. do a closed caption yeah right <laughs> just have text go across the screen for yeah. a few minutes sorry the audio went out here but here's some closed caption nice cool well i appreciate it guys it was fun good fun time. to get back and running again times. yep yeah thanks um thanks yep. a lot have a good night and uh yeah i'll run, probably run it again sometime and see how the next party does so now we did a halloween now we did a christmas we're having a good time yeah up. thanks for it to go appreciate that wait Martin Luther King Day. <laughs> appreciate that yeah all right guys have a good night i'm gonna shut her down have a good one gentlemen all right, all right. Yeah, see you guys night, everybody all right see you thanks quidian thanks for playing
um yeah thanks for to go it was it was fun um had a good time i screwed up a couple things i don't know why for me sirenscape online it it crashed a few times i just i don't know why that's doing that but uh but the sounds worked well i just had to reboot them a few times uh, and it worked out well so um anyway i enjoyed thanks everyone for being here good night everybody and um i don't know if uh the winner of the module is still here uh, min clark but i will get that out to you by tomorrow have a good evening everybody and, and merry christmas if uh i don't talk to you all before uh the holiday have a great holiday everybody